Hi again, I'm Alina. I'm a developer advocate for GraalVM at Oracle Labs. Thank you all for coming here. It's a very competitive slot. There are a lot of great talks happening at the same time in this time slot. So thank you a lot for taking time to show up. And let's do this. So super quickly, a few words about me. So I work at Oracle Labs. And at Oracle Labs, we are doing research. So this is an R&D organization at Oracle. And it used to be this way ever since it was Sun Microsystems. So my organization is part of that research organization that was at Sun Labs. And we are still doing research in areas like machine learning, security, programming languages, compilers, all kinds of things. And GraalVM grew out of a research project at Oracle Labs as well. I love open source and communities a lot, and uh, both programming and natural languages. And also, I'm Ukrainian, and I'm still living in Ukraine. That photo that you see on my slide, that is my beautiful hometown, Lviv. And I hope that one day it will be safe again, and you can all come there and appreciate it and as much as I like it. So that's it for the intro. And now let's talk about GraalVM. So I'm just curious, how many of you have tried using GraalVM? Almost everyone, oh my god, like maybe this talk isn't even necessary. Um, so, and did you use native image or something else? Native image, yeah, I figured. But OK, just to be on the same page, let's super quickly recap what GraalVM can do for Java developers, since I assume most people here are Java developers. So one is you can use GraalVM as your normal GDK. So the way you use OpenGDK or whatever is the distribution of your choice, you can use GraalVM in the same way as well. Because sometimes uh, people associate GraalVM only with native image because it's so innovative and exciting. But it's also important to remember that GraalVM is a full-blown normal JDK, and you can do all the things you would do on any other JDK on GraalVM as well. And the only thing that is different in GraalVM if you compare it to, let's say, OpenJDK, is that we are replacing the top-tier highly optimizing compiler, so C2. We are replacing with our brand new, our own Graal compiler, which has quite a few new additional optimization phases, and many applications will see performance benefits just by running on GraalVM as a JDK. So that is the JIT part. And obviously, the native image part, that is where we take your Java application and compile it ahead of time into a platform-specific native executable. And the reason to do so is that you can just deploy that executable on a machine that doesn't have JVM on, and it is fully functional, fully working on its own. And uh, last but not least, GraalVM is also a polyglot VM. So in addition to Java and traditional JVM languages, you can also execute any number of languages on GraalVM. So some of the languages that are kind of coming from our team, supported by our team, are JavaScript, Python, Ruby, et cetera. And you can execute each of them on GraalVM, or you can, you can even write polyglot applications. So applications that leverage a few of those languages, a few of those libraries in one app, and GraalVM will give you these interlock features out of the box, but also it will give you tooling to work with such polyglot applications, and it will give you optimizations for the whole thing, so you can run with high performance no matter how many languages you are using. So this is an overview, and also what I specifically like about GraalVM is that it's also an open source project. Somebody even told me, I don't know how to verify that, it might be one of the biggest Java open source projects out there. So you can check it out on GitHub, but indeed, yes, it is pretty huge, and we have a lot of repos that is our core languages repo tools. So if you're a Java developer, I encourage you to check it out. It's quite interesting to see how something like that is being developed in open source. So let's talk about native image a bit more. So native image is this ahead of time compilation part of GraalVM, where we take your Java application and we produce a native executable version of it. And the reason to do so is that since this executable no longer requires a JVM to run, it can start significantly faster and use much less memory compared to running on a JVM. And that is one of the reasons why all those major Java microservice frameworks have adopted GraalVM native image as a platform to run your Java applications. So when you hear something, I don't know, Quarkus native, Micronaut native, that is all relying on GraalVM native image as a platform to run your applications. So how is it even possible to take something so dynamic as Java and compile it ahead of time into native executable? So this is an overview of uh, the build process. And what happens is that uh, if you think of working with your application as with native image, we are kind of splitting this work into the runtime and build time. 
And the idea is to move all the expensive operations, all the heavy lifting from the runtime to build time. So you can do all those expensive operations one once and you don't have to repeat them every single time you start the application. So at this point, uh, sometimes we get this question, but okay, native image build times uh, can be quite long for bigger applications or can take significant resources for bigger applications. But the thing is that that's the price that you pay anyway when you run your applications on a JVM. Only in this case, we offer you a opportunity to do it once at build time and not to pay this overhead every time you are running your application. So uh, that is the way to think about the build process of native image. And that's an overview idea. And how it works in practice is that when you run our native image tool and you give it your Java application, what happens, it will start analyzing your application, trying to find all the reachable code. So all the code that is necessary for your application to perform any functions that it has. And it will only include that code in the final produced executable. So it will analyze your code, your dependencies, GDK classes you are using, and it will only include those things that you are actually using in the produced executable. And that is the way how native image makes this executable so slim and lightweight. It's eliminating everything you are not using and only including things that you actually need for your application to run. So that is the compilation part. And another part is that uh, native image is also kind of a sna snapshotting technology for Java. So at build time, we will also run initialization and we will prepare pre-populated version of your heap. So your application can start with pre-populated heap and again, not do all this overhead work when you first run your application. And all of this is happening at the image build time. So before you run your application, and here it is important to mention that this is happening under closed world assumption. So this is happening ahead of time. We don't know yet how your application will behave at the runtime. So this is happening at closed world assumption. And it has both its benefits and things to be aware of. And we will talk about that in a second. But the idea is that everything your application does or everything there is to know about your application behavior needs to be known at build time because that is when compilation is happening. And uh, I mentioned previously that native image starts so much faster and where is that actually coming from and how does that compare to running on the JVM? So when you run your application on the JVM, could be Grow VM or any other JVM of your choice, pretty much the standard process happens is when you start your application first, there is quite a bit of work to be done. So we need to load the JVM executable itself, you need to load classes, start interpreting, start compiling, and then initially when your application warms up, it can run on its peak best performance. Now comparing to that, since we did all of that already at the image build time, when you run your application as an native executable, you only need to load the executable and that it can already start running with already optimized compiled machine code. So even kind of visually comparing those two running modes, you can see how IoT is so much faster because we don't have to repeat all those operations once again. And that is startup time. And a similar uh, comparison applies also if we compare memory usage of running on a JVM versus running on native image. So again, on a JVM, you need to keep memory around for the JVM executable, for your application data, and basically for all the code execution infrastructure you need for your application to run. While on a native image, since we did all of that at the image build time, you need much less memory and we will see that about in a second. Okay, so let's say it sounds good and you want to start building your first native application. So what will you do and what are some helpful tips to do so? One is if you're starting a new project, could be in your production or maybe your hobby project, we do recommend that you use our official Graydon on Maven plugins from GrowVM team, so you can find them by the name Native Build Tools. And they are designed to help you build, test, and deploy native image applications. And they help you quite a bit, and specifically they also help you to test applications and ensure that they also behave correctly in the native image mode. And this is an example of uh, including build tools in your native image application. And now if my connection uh, hopefully is still on, let me show you a demo of that. Okay, so here I have my Java application with tests. And when we look at it, here is my application, which as you can tell, isn't doing much, but also I have my calculator and it's doing some basic calculations. 
and we also have tests to ensure that my calculator is doing some reasonable calculations. So uh, we are here and let's run this. And if I look at my uh, POMXML file, I also have my native build tools and specifically my native Maven plugin. So let's run this one. Okay, so this is running now, and as a part of this uh, package process, it will also compile my test in the native image mode, and it will also print out the report of saying how my tests ran. Let me get this higher. Okay, we are compiling, done, and the next step is creating the image. So here I can see my native image report being printed out and we see that we did all our calculations in the native image mode as well and they ran all successfully. But also I see that my tests are in this target native uh, target directory they're called native tests. So just to show you that it's really a native app, let me run this specifically and I see the same report. So this is basically how you would test in the native image mode. One thing I do want to mention here is that you probably don't want to necessarily compile to native and run tests in the native image mode on every single minor change of your application, especially around the business logic. So this might be a bit uh, excessive and uh, probably you don't have to do it on every single minor step. So as a more or less final step in your development process, or if you think you might be changing things significantly and that could be a breaking change, you can do so then. But normally our recommendation is that you just develop on a JVM and then you compile to native as a more or less final step in your development process. So let's say this is looking good, but this is, let's say, a basic application. And how would you test something bigger in native image mode? For that, let me see if I can open this one. So here I have a Micronaut application, and it's a basically a book application that contains some list of books. And it also has some tests to ensure that we can put some books into this app using MySQL, and then we can verify that the application is working correctly. So I will not rerun this one uh, live because it's taking a few minutes in my machine. I have this set up locally, but I can walk you through what happened there. So uh, this is using, uh, this is a Micronaut application and it's using Micronaut test resources, which is a feature within Micronaut that allows you easy, easily test against external dependencies, just for example, database. And it's using as one of the ways test containers to test against those dependencies. How many of you know test containers? Okay, my friend Oleg would be super happy to see this. I will tell him. So I ran my Gradle native test task here. And as a part of that, it spin up a MySQL container for me. And it also compiled my test to native. And after all that happened, it also printed the report. Where is it? Uh, yes, so my MySQL test ran successfully against that container. And also a greater test that we have to ensure basically simple function saying hello also ran successfully. So this is another recommendation that I have for you. If you want to uh, do uh, some probably less trivial applications, probably using one of the frameworks that work with native image and leveraging whatever is the testing functionality that framework is giving you out of the box is a good way to test your applications specifically in the native image mode as well. So that is that about testing. Okay, we were there, and Micronaut test resources, we talked about this. Okay, next point. So if you want to work with native image in your like real world application, most likely you are curious about GraalVM and reflection. And how many of you have heard that GraalVM doesn't support reflection? More people than I would prefer to, but yeah. The next time you see those people, you tell them that this is not true. For one, you can run the applications on GraalVM in JIT mode and everything works just fine. But also in the native image mode as well, there is a way to make reflection work, even a couple of ways, and I will talk about them in a bit. So native image can do reflection, but with a little bit of help from you or whatever is the framework or library you are using. So what is the deal with GraalVM native image and reflection? 
So since native image compilation is happening ahead of time and the closed world assumption, some of the more dynamic Java features and reflection is a good example. It's hard to figure out if you don't have that runtime information yet. So native image will try and detect some of the reflection calls automatically. But in some cases, this is again non-trivial under closed world assumption. So in that case, it might need a little bit of help from your side. And there are a few ways to produce such configuration. So one is you can produce it manually, which is it's basically a matter of creating a JSON file and specifying what exactly you want to, ex to access reflectively. But for a bigger application, that can be non-trivial. So probably the better way would be to use our tracing agent. So along with native image, we also ship a tracing agent that can observe your application behavior on the JVM, produce this necessary configuration automatically, and put it into the standard directory so native image can pick it up and then build your application being aware of this reflection that you're trying to do. So this is helpful. We do want to say, though, that this is not a silver bullet, and most likely we want to at least check those files and make sure they are complete. So please do not rely on this blindly. Make sure you checked and the files are complete. But this is a great tool that helps you with these configuration files a lot. And the last but not least, ideally, this reflection would be coming from third party libraries and tools and frameworks that you're trying to use. So ideally, it will be coming from them. And those libraries and frameworks will be providing this helpful configuration information for native image. Uh, so there is that. And actually, let me show you a demo of how you would configure reflection on your own. <coughs> For that, I have this Java app with reflection. Let me get to that one. Yep. So what we have here is an application, and let me just put this down, which is trying to access this message field from this message class over here. But as you can tell, it's doing so in a rather non-obvious, non-trivial way. And the reason we are doing it this way is to, to try and confuse and uh, outsmart native image, because if this was a bit more predictable, native image could figure out this call automatically. But we are trying to do this uh, non-trivially just for the demo purposes so we can show you how to configure this thing. So uh, we are trying to access this message thing. And let me look at my POMXML. And here I have my native image agent enabled. So let me disable it. So I'm setting this to false. And uh, yeah, looking good. Let's try building this. So this is a smaller app. This should not take long. OK, it's on. Let's try running it. And it's called example app. OK, and it shows us this reflection not working message, which is coming here where we catch that exception. So let's see how we can fix that. For one, let me go back to my POMXML and enable using our tracing agent. And while we are here, I also want to show you my, where is it, target native. So this is the standard directory where my tracing agent would output config. And here I have my reflection config JSON file. And also I have somewhere my agent run script. So this will run this agent on GraalVM as a JVM and hopefully will produce configuration for us. So let me run this. Super quick, and let me go back, and I now have my configuration. So obviously, in this case, it's a smaller app and smaller config file. This is something we could write uh, with our hands manually. But for a bigger application, this tracing agent could be really helpful, so you don't have to do all this manual work yourself. So let me just once again verify that the agent is on. It's on, and let me try rebuilding this app. OK, 
Okay, it's on. And let me try running it again. Okay, and now it says hello native. And that hello native is coming from this message class. So that's basically the way you would configure reflection, again, manually, but ideally you probably wouldn't want to do this manually. You would want it to either provide it to you by set parties or at least by the tracing agent. Okay, so this is using reflection in your own app where you know exactly how it behaves and what you want the app to do, but what if your application is using some third party dependencies and those are doing reflection and it's harder for you to figure out what exactly it does and how to configure it. So for that, as I said, ideally this config would be shaped by those dependencies that you are using. But in case it is not, our team some time ago introduced this Grow VM Reachability Metadata Repository. And this is a centralized place where we collect metadata for different popular libraries and tools so that users can share, contribute, and reuse this metadata because it could be the case that you are trying to use some library and somebody has already figured out configuration for it and you don't have probably to repeat those steps yourself. So we created as this like centralized place for that. And let me actually run the build and I will show this to you in a second. But yeah, this, the goal of this repo is to create centralized place where users can contribute and reuse metadata so you do not have to recreate this on your project on your own. So for that, uh, let me show you another demo. Okay, so this is the one. And here I have my application that is trying to put and that read some customers from the H2 database. So this is the app and this is my POMXML. And uh, let me just go to the right terminal. So this is my uh, POMXML and here, this is basically the section responsible for looking at the metadata repository. So let me remove this. Let's say I don't know that this exists and I cannot use it. Okay, this is looking good. And let me build this one. And I'm skipping the test, so I want my application to actually build so I can show you at runtime what exactly is the issue and how we fix it. So while this compiles, let me go back to the repo to show you what it looks like. Uh, so yeah, this is an open source repo up on GitHub. Everyone can contribute and we actually have uh, quite a few teams from the ecosystem and fr framework teams contributing to this repo so you can use all these different configuration. Right now we have MySQL, we have some config for Netty, we have for H2, and we, are keep, keep, we keep building this out so your contributions are also welcome. This is still work in progress. So I'm hoping this is built already. Okay, this is, and uh, let me try running this. Okay, so this fails, and who doesn't like it when live demos fail, right? And it complains to me that it cannot figure out how to work with H2. But luckily, in this case, the fix is easy. I'm just bringing back my metadata reflection config. I'm saving this, and I will rebuild my application again. Okay, I don't know if you paid attention the previous time, maybe I should have pointed out, but even when we look at the Nati image build command, we see that the build command itself is different. So right now the metadata reachability repo is picked up and we see that it's specifically looking at H2 and I believe we even see a specific commit message for when this H2 config data was contributed to the repo. So now it can access the repo and hopefully it solves our issue with working with H2 in native. Okay, we are done with compilation, should be up any second now. Okay, it's up and let's try running this again. Okay, so now it works, so now it can figure out how to put and then read those customers from the database. And notice how I did not need to specify any specific configuration around H2 itself, versions, what exactly I'm trying to do. So I'm just saying that I'm aware of this repo and it's okay to go and look at that repo and try to pull this configuration automatically for me. So that is basically the goal of this repository.
Okay, and let's talk a bit about performance. So we all know and love JVM for how it can really optimize well for the peak throughput, right? So once it warms up, it can give you a really high performance. And we often get this question, so okay, AT compilation is probably great for startup and great for low memory footprint, but what about peak throughput? So I still want to have it for my application in addition to all those other things. And there is a way to approach it. So by default, if you look at this throughput chart, uh, the green line that is running on JIT, and then the red and yellow that is running on native image in two configurations. So the first thing I want to point out here is that you see how JIT has this warm up curve. So that is all those operations that happen in the beginning that we talked about previously, right? And co in comparison to that, native image starts with uh, kind of instant performance. So it could be the case that you want to have high performance for your application from the very beginning when it starts. So then native image is a good uh, use case for you. But also there is one more, one more thing to do with uh, native image performance, and that is profile guard optimizations. So when you are running your application on a JVM, uh, the way it optimizes it so well at runtime is it collects profile information about your application. So it observes which method often called, which types are used, and having this profile information and executing code dynamically is how JVM optimizes for the best peak throughput. So the way to approach this for native image would be with profile guide optimizations, and that is that you can run your native image application in instrumented mode, apply relevant workloads to your application so we can collect this profile information, and then if you give us those profiles at image build time, so before we compile the application, we can build the application with those profiles in mind, and then we can optimize for the best peak throughput because we are kind of aware ahead of time of how your application will perform at the image runtime. So that is the, be the best way probably to get peak throughput really high with native image as well. And I'm not saying that native image is a silver bullet and you should immediately migrate to native image. Indeed, in many cases, JIT will still outperform native image in terms of peak throughput. But uh, I do want to mention a few things here because I often hear this comment that AOT will never perform at the speed of JIT and simply not possible because of how things are done. And uh, yes, uh, JIT is really great for peak throughput. Uh, there is no denying it. But for some application and some scenarios, IoT can perform faster than JIT. And here are a few reasons. One is on JIT, uh, applications warm up, so get to their final compiled optimized state. But in some cases, in some applications, some of the code that is not often called will still run interpreted. And interpreted is significantly like orders of magnitude slower than compiled. So that could be the case, and then in IoT, everything is compiled, there is no inter interpretation anymore, so we compile everything ahead of time. That could be one of the reasons, and another is that some optimizations that are possible in IoT under closed-world assumption are not possible under JIT. So closed-world assumption that native image operates under, it's a limitation in a way, but also it's a benefit, because knowing everything about your application at build time allows us to enable very specific, very aggressive optimizations because we know that there will be no unknown behavior happening at runtime. So we can be more aggressive with optimizations. And the last thing is that uh, JIT be happening at runtime needs to be kind of aware and careful of the overhead costs that it's causing your application while it's compiling on the go. And contrary to that, native image can dedicate significant time and resources because the compilation is happening in build time. So probably you are less concerned with how long it takes and how many resources it's using because you are doing it once and then you're starting your application as often and as fast as you need. So I'm not saying that IoT is a silver bullet. It's probably not. But there are some cases in which IoT can outperform JIT as well. Okay, and here we are talking about profile guide organization. So yeah, having profiles available at the image build time can help you build an application that is really aware of your application behavior and can perform really fast at the image runtime. And in terms of memory usage, if you want to optimize performance even more, there are a few options available in native image. So by default, you get serial GC but it's also possible to use G1GC in native image, and in case you don't need to do any GCs at all, you have Epsilon GC available as an option as well. 
And if you want to monitor your, your application and how it is performing, one of the ways is that we have JFR support in the 90 image mode. This is still work in progress, and we are working on this together with the team at Red Hat. So very grateful for their contributions. But we keep building this out, so we are adding support for more and more JFR events in every release. So this is something you can use for your Nertia application right now. And in terms of what is coming up next, uh, we are also adding JMX support to Nati Image. So hopefully the next release, 22.23.0, uh, sorry, is when this will land, so in January. And uh, in case you want to compress your produced executables, so make the files smaller for whatever reason, so maybe you're running in some resources constrained environment, you can use a tool called UPX to compress your native executable. And for example, here you can see how you can take your Spring Boot app, let's say, and take the image size down from 66 megabytes to just 17. And if the, if the file size is something that you are concerned about, this could be the way to go. I do want to mention here that this, in case you're using some more aggressive compression algorithms, this can have impact on the runtime behavior of your application. So basically it's the same trade-off as with everything. If you want to compress the size, there most likely will be some price to pay. And in that case, that could be the decompression at runtime. And another thing, so if you are looking to build, to deploy your applications to the cloud, Native Image also gives you an, an opportunity to compile your application as fully static native image or mostly static against uh, linked against everything except for libc. And this is something you can use, for example, even from scratch containers. And uh, one more interesting aspect of native image I wanted to mention that is often overlooked and I think it's unfair. So we talked about how native image is very fast when it starts and how it's great for memory usage, but also there is a security aspect to it. And uh, the security aspect is coming from the following. So as we saw, there is no unknown code loading and executing at the image runtime. So uh, all of that needs to be known at build time or otherwise it's not happening. And also it could be the case that you are pulling some dependency that you don't trust so much or maybe you're not using like a big part of it. So what native image will do, it will eliminate everything that you're not using and it will only include parts that you're actually using in this final produced executable. So that is one thing. And yes, only the code that is proven to be reachable, so actually doing some valuable job for your application will be included in this final executable. And things like reflection and literalization in native image, they are disabled by default. And then uh, they, as you saw before, they require specific config and kind of access list to be available in the native executable. And some of the uh, possible attack vectors, more specifically around dynamic execution and JIT compilation, are not possible because there is no JIT compilation. It's all been compiled ahead of time. Okay, and I want to mention a few things about what is new in GraalVM. So uh, if you ever try to compile some bigger application to native image, you could have noticed that the build times can take some time for bigger apps. So there is a way to approach it, and we introduced this new quick build mode. This is intended only for development purposes. This is not something you will do for your final production app, but basically by specifying this dash or B flag, you can enable this quick build mode, and what it does, it will skip some of the optimization phases, so you will get faster build times, but at the cost of lower runtime performance. So this is intended solely for development purposes. If you want to super quickly compile your app, get quick results, this is the way to go. But then if you want to actually deploy a your application to production, you want to compile it with a normal, fully blown uh, compilation mode so it can have decent runtime performance. But just to get quick results as you're developing your application, this is quite helpful. And we also have debugging of specifically native image applications coming to IntelliJ. This is already available in preview builds. You can give it a try and waiting for more updates from the IntelliJ team. And uh, yeah, sorry, this we talked about. And if you want to see what is next coming up for GraalVM, we have this community roadmap available on GitHub and there you can see different features and when they are more or less coming and scheduled for each of our next releases. So here we have features for the compiler, for native image, for Python, for all parts of GraalVM. And uh, to get started with GraalVM, 
uh, there is this new quick access download link for GraalVM that you see on the screen here. This is basically allowing you to download native image and GraalVM as one JDK in one command. Or if you are using SDK man, you can also get GraalVM latest version from SDK man as well. And uh, let me check where we are on the time because I have a few more demos that I wanted to show you specifically related to the latest GraalVM features. So I have my GraalVM JDK 19 builds somewhere here. And as you know, uh, there is this simple web server tool available in since Java 18. And since now we have JDK 19 builds available as well, you can try using it on GraalVM. But also since it's a native application, since it's a Java application, you can do even better and you can compile it to native and you can get it to start even faster. So I actually have it compiled already. Yes, here is my JWeb server and uh, let me run it in native mode. So it's on and if we go there and we see what it does, it's not doing much, but it's serving my local directory. And this is compiled to a native image. So another thing I can do here is, uh, since we enabled all those monitoring features, and for example, enabled GVM stat support in native image, I can also monitor this application from my visual VM. So I have it on here, and I believe this will be the last process we opened. So I can go to monitoring and I can see some stats, like for example, heap usage of my native JWeb J -web server. But let's see if uh, we can get it more busy and maybe put some more load on it. So this is Visual VM and let's use Hey to put some more load on it. And uh, yeah, I think this is looking good. So this just sent 1K request to my server and it showed us decent response times for my app. And this is it still running as a native image application. And another thing I wanted to show to you is hopefully if this runs. So let me actually start running it and then I can talk to you what this is. So since we have JDK 19 builds, uh, we also support virtual threads from the project Loom, and this also works in the native image mode. So here it's running on native, and what is happening here, you can see that it's leveraging 2K virtual threads. And uh, uh, I don't know how many of you know this game. Probably I don't have to explain what is happening here, right? But yeah, it's computationally heavy, and it's doing a lot of computations on each kind of generation change. So uh, this number of ticks, it's uh, how many of this generation changes happening is happening per second. And this is running on native image mode, and this is something you can also try with Graal VM on JVM or in native image. We have this demo available. And uh, yeah, at the moment we have builds available for JDK 17, 19, and 11 as of this release, but we are planning to retire JDK 11 support, so we will planning to ship 17 and latest Java versions. So if you haven't migrated it, but you're considering it, please migrate now so you can use all the latest Java features with Graal VM as well. And that's, I think, all that I wanted to show to you. So if you want to get started with Graal VM, you can just go to graalvm.org. This is our website. And yeah, there's this big announcement that we did recently that Graal VM Community Edition is becoming a part of OpenJDK. So expect some more changes and more announcements coming in the future. And uh, that's all I had. If you have some questions, please come to me. And organizers ask to say, please write the session. So please write the session in the JFL app. And thank you all for coming. If you have questions, please come here or just ask from the room. Thank you.